this episode of Spotlight, we are at a venue that um, used to be owned by the legendary John Wilson, an angler that got me into carp fishing, and this is one of his old lakes. So incredibly excited to be here, and I'm not sure if you can see what I'm seeing, but just over my shoulder, there's a lot of fish cruising about, and they look special. This is a, a normal place that you would find carp in a lake like this under these snags. But there's none here at the moment because they're all out there. I can see them. <coughs> nice little corner down there. I bet they get up this end. To be honest with you, I think they get everywhere. Because the lake ain't that big. And they're moving around so quickly out there. They must cover it 20, 30 times a day this lake, which is good. I think it's about an acre, acre and a half. It's not massive, it's just very pretty, really pretty. Looks challenging. It's a lot of weed down there. Love a bit of weed. Looks like it's ballast pit. It's all very ballasty. Is <laughs> where the it's been extracted for roads and stuff like that. Building stuff. Ballast pit. They're feeding off the scum and there's so much, they're like flies, water flies all over the water. The carp are actually taking them by the looks of it. There's water boatmen or something skidding across the water, but the carp are coming up. I remember in one of the go fishing episodes, John Wilson fishing, stalking this and catching carp on worm with an old waggler. Can't mimic it though, because I'm going to waggler. Nor no worms. I'm a waggler with no worms. <laughs> I've done a couple of laps now and I think I'm going to go on the other side. Just, um, I don't know. I just fancy the other side, so I'm going to go with my gut instinct. I can see the carp cruising about on the weed. I love fishing in weed. It is challenging, but I like a challenge as well. So. I think I'm going to go over there, and if need be, I can always move. If, if it doesn't work out, I can always move. But uh, that seems a good a spot as any, so that is where I am going to set my gear up, first of all, at least. Well, I've given it a good go off the top, and although I've got them feeding out there, or had them feeding out there, um, they are really shy about taking the hook bait. They literally go up to it, nose it, and just turn off. So, um, yeah, that's enough of that for the time being. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna make up a couple of solid bags and throw some solid bags out there and um, see if that, that works. But uh, there's a nice little shallow plateau out there, a nice little clear spot, and I think a solid bag on that is gonna look quite good with a scatter of the boilies as well. Um, always seem to do well on a lake like this with the sauce, so, and that's what I'm gonna put out there, really. So before I put that solid bag out, what I'm gonna do is actually gonna try it in that weed in front of me. I've got a bit of solid, thick weed, just literally under the rod tips here. Now I've heard that they're coming out, or have come out, on um, solid bags with tiger nuts and plastic corn. 
However, I've got no plastic corn with me because I've taken it out of my tackle box now because most lakes are banning it, so it's important as it being in there. Um, anyway, so we'll try it in there, see what happens because that weed is very, very knitted together and I've got a funny feeling that a bag in that is just going to disappear. So I need to check that out first before I just randomly throw that out there onto certain areas. Now I can see there's some clear spots. So the clear spots is probably going to be the areas that I'm going to hit. But if I do miss them and go into the weed, I need to be confident enough to leave them out there. And the only way of checking that is to try and see what they look like sitting in that weed right under my rod tip because that's what's out there as well. Well, that isn't very presentable, is it? It's actually disappeared totally. So do not pull it up or not. Want to be? Well, that bag is just plummeted straight through that weed and totally, totally disappeared. And that is not how I want it. Although the fish will probably find it at some point, I haven't got enough time here to wait for them to find it. And um, yeah, I do not want to be hitting that. So I'm going to aim for the clear spots. I need to hit the clear spots for the best chance to get something out of here in the time that I've got. Mm, that's interesting. been getting some really really unusual knocks to the point where it couldn't be liners anyway um, I had a look at the pellet which I put down there in the PVA bag earlier and to my surprise I've actually got a party of crayfish going absolutely mental on it so I've just literally dropped my rig down just to see what they're doing and they are annihilating it they're picking it up putting it in the weed and that's why I think a lot of people struggle in here and it does makes sense why people are catching carp on plastic baits and nuts so a few questions have been answered and now i need to make a decision what i'm going to do next i'm so pleased i left two zigs out because they're high enough where they're not getting attacked by the craze but uh yeah it's okay with the craze in an area that's clear because they just keep moving it as long as you've got hard bait and they're not destroying it uh, and the cart will move them on but in that weed if i'm hitting that weed they're just putting it in there, it's disappearing and they're just having a fest on it and yeah i'm going to pull my rig in with no bait in the morning so hmm yeah didn't expect to do this so late at night but there we go we do what we need to do that is absolutely annihilated that was in there seconds Oh well. Savage drop back on the margin rod. Is there something on that? Yes, there is. Jamie! Yeah, on the margin rod. It's literally right here.
Oh, get in that net. It looks like them changes worked. And that was on the margin one. I literally lowered that in there and I just watched that bait sit on top of that weed and it's gone. Woohoo! Brilliant. It didn't fight at all. It just literally just like give up. It's a banger, mate. You wait to have a problem with this. Oh, it is proper, proper nice. Just in here. Look at this, a fish that probably John Wilson caught himself in the 70s. And even better, this is actually his lake it's come from as well. To have one is, you're blessed. So well happy. Oh my good God. Oh, Jamie's still in the water. Oh, okay. Could you grab that left foot, please? Thank you. I only just said you're privileged to have one out of here. Well, blessed to have one. I've got two. Just got to get it in first. They don't fight very hard. It's almost. Oh. Yeah. That's mental. How's that for your luck? Well, it ain't luck, is it? Shh. Them changes have made the difference. We struggled like hell, crayed out. Now, all of a sudden, confidence levels are massively high again. I hope we're not speaking too soon. <laughs> Look at that. I said I'm blessed with one. I've got two. Absolutely stunning. And this is exactly why we come to these places. These old ballast pits, gravel pits, whatever you call them. Various depths, chopped with weed, choked with weed, lily pads, character, snags, it's got everything. And this is what you catch from them. Stunning. manic was that last half hour um, that all went on then and it was hectic to the point where everyone was rushing about like blue ass flies I even got one of my mates boys to grab my GoPro to bring it down to me so I could try and catch what was actually going on Jamie was still in the water um, yeah like I say it's absolutely manic and um, what was quite interesting though is when we put the, the drone up to for a release shot we actually noticed there's quite a few bigger fish in this lake and uh, the two that I had, one went 21.12 and the other one went 25.10. So um, half decent sizes, nice start, but more importantly, just 
the, the condition and the look of them is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So now we've got to try and target some of these other fish. And there's one particular fish out there that's breaching the surface every now and again. It's got a big hump on its back. And um, I've sort of like nicknamed it Lumpy or Bumpy, Humpy, Humpy, that was it. And um, that would be a nice fish to have because I think that's quite considerably bigger than the other two that I've had. So let's, let's see if we can target that fish. Let's see. Got to get underneath the other rod, so it's it's gone in the weed bed. It's out the weed bed. It's in the weed bed. Come on, where'd you come? I'm not sure where it's gone. Am I over the top of it or underneath yeah, yeah, yeah. it? Get on me. Well, I've got a carp on at the moment and it's burying itself in the weed. It is coming though. So a little concentration here. Oh, oh dear, I don't like it when it does that flicked off its fin. That's happened before. But I've got to get it in and get underneath my other rods. Yeah. It is, yeah. It's another dark fish. Another John Wilson banger. Just hope I can get it in. I don't like the way that lid's not dropped. It's bouncing. It's going for a snag. Get out. Get out. Yes, get in there. Three. Well, the first two fish come off a yellow banana and pineapple dynamite pop-up, where the last one, however, come off of a little black and white zig with a little size 10 hook. And the way I've basically tied this is onto a, a drop-off on an inline lead. Um, I haven't pushed that swivel into the bottom too tight because I do want that to drop off. It didn't actually drop off on the last one and when I was landing it that lead was bouncing around and that is where you lose fish. So particularly with the zigs, you know, in this weed, that needs to come off. So now I have actually done that. So I'm just going to demonstrate that quickly now. So if that pulls through into the, into the weed, it's literally just knocked it off so easy. But there's enough tension there to hold it on the cast as it hits the water. But more importantly, that is now going to drop my error. I pushed it on a little bit too tight, but I've learned, and luckily, it didn't result in me losing that fish. So, but I'm not going to take any chances. That lead is going to come off every time now. So I need to get that back on and get it out there, and we can sort this fish out that's in this retainer.
Well, today's gone really, really well. I've had them three fish so far, but unfortunately we need to be off of this lake uh, first thing in the morning. Um, because of the issues I had with the craze last night when I bought my rigs in that were on the bottom, um, I had nothing left on there. So what I'm gonna do is we've found out that they can't get to these zigs um, if they're over two and a half foot. So I'm gonna put three zigs out tonight and leave them out there all night and see what happens. Hopefully we can get another one before we go, um, but only time will tell. But it'd be interesting just to show you that hopefully that carp take zigs at night as well, which they do. And I've had many a carp off of a zig at night time. So let's see if we can get one out of here at night as well. Another quiet night last night. Um, it seems very much, well for me personally, it's all been about the daytime and the daytime bite. Don't doubt they come out at night as well, but uh, a little bit happen, a little bit more happens at night. Them, them crayfish really do start getting active and uh, yeah, they just come out from every little crevice under the bank and out of the weed and it just makes it that little bit more tricky. Now I can understand why people say this lake is so hard uh, because there's a lot to contend with but with the changes that we made and you know once you work out what the actual issue is you, you can actually get your head around it and when you do work out what to do the proofs in the pudding you know we managed to have three fish out in quite quick succession as well really um, we've only done 36 hours my time has been cut short for me uh, for personal reasons I need to be out the gate at seven o'clock this morning to get home um, so yeah, although we haven't done the time that I wanted to, you know, we've had three twenties, three very, very good looking twenties. And um, yeah, I've loved my time here. And while I've been sitting here, every morning when that sun come, comes up, I've, I've been getting flashbacks and of the episodes and imagine John Wilson walking around this place and you know, the story with this place, it, it just adds to it. And Jamie, the cameraman, said, you know, although it's small, it's got big lake features and this is what we like. We, we like these sort of lakes. So until next time, that is an end to this and uh, yeah, stay lucky. Mm -hmm.